So I decided today to tell you about some of the best free to play decks that you can get in the game. I've actually done videos on these exact decks before, but sometimes I've used Colonel Jackson and some people have said I don't have access to Colonel Jackson. And I've always said Lieutenant Strongarm is just a direct replacement. She does some great stuff in the early game. She has a different kind of role than Colonel Jackson, but she's still an incredibly good commander. Uh, but I actually wanted to show you the decks and then show you a replay of the decks in Tiberium League, showing you that they work even versus some of the best players in this game. And usually when I'm recording content for a game, um, I usually, I don't know, I do like five to ten games across the decks that I want to use because really I'm searching for a, a game where I actually win, for one, because it gets I can show you the win conditions. And I also, like, I don't want to show you a game versus level eights, for instance, because the people will just say, well, you've got such a massive level difference, which, to be honest, is true in some cases. But... I queued up and recorded the three decks that I wanted to do, and I got three wins in a row, um, even versus very even unit levels as well, which is great. So I didn't even have to try hard today, guys. Did all the hard work for me. Uh, and I'm actually doing really well on the leaderboard. I'm 63 now. I'm 63 out of 100 worldwide. So you can trust the advice of old Excoundrel. He's got the leaderboard back up. Uh, anyway, anyway, the first deck that I do want to talk to you about, I've got two GDI decks and one Nod deck. One aggro GDI deck, one tech GDI deck, and one Nod aggro deck. The reason I don't have a Nod tech deck for you is I can't actually recommend any of the early Nod tech units to you because they're all utter garbage. Right, let's move on to the GDI deck. This is the GDI deck that I want to talk about first. Now, if you're a new player and you don't have access to the Talon, you should very quickly get access to almost everything else apart from the Talon. Um, Talon comes a little bit later, maybe level 7 or something. I can't quite remember. Um, well, we can actually find out together. We're going to have a scroll up. The Talon comes at level 6. Uh, and you can just corroborate it there. The Talon comes at level 6. So the Talon comes at level 6, um, which means you should get it pretty quickly. And that, I mean, you, you won't be really climbing a massive amount until you're level 6 anyway. Um, but if you don't want to use the Talon, you want to start this from day one, use the Rhino instead. It fulfills the same job. It's, it's basically there to deal with Shockwave Troopers. And the Rhino does the similar kind of thing, but it isn't flying. So this is the deck. The primary win conditions of this deck are win first missile, win second missile. Unless you're against an, another aggro deck where it is perfectly acceptable to lose the first missile because you neither of you are ramping up. If you're going up against a tech deck and you lose the first missile, that's when you're, you're, that's when you're in hot water. I was talking too quickly for my own good. That is when you're in hot water. Um, if you lose the first missile as an aggro deck versus a tech deck because Tiberium income ramps up over time. So if you get to the third missile and you've not won already, you're going to start being a little bit sticky situation. So win first missile, win second missile, win game is pretty much the point of this deck. And we're going to show it to you in, in action now as we re-watch the replay uh, from my Tiberium League game versus Usual Suspect, who I think might even be... No, I think he's slightly below me on the leaderboard. It's actually someone from his alliance that's slightly higher than me. So, he opened Scarabs. Now, that doesn't. this doesn't affect the way that I start the game. You want to do the very first thing is open with Rifleman. Now, usually you'd open with Rifleman before opening with Harvester, but for me, it's just habit opening with Harvester first. But as you're climbing, it shouldn't matter too much. What the Rifleman are there to accomplish is primarily to scout. Now, you saw me just throw two sets of Riflemen into that Scarab. That's because that's a perfectly fine way to deal with a Scarab. Scarabs cost 30 Tiberium, Riflemen cost 10. Two times Riflemen for one time Scarab, 10 Tiberium to me. It's a good way of dealing with it. And he gets out another set of Scarabs, and again, I'm just I'm just really happy to just, just throw my Riflemen. I even got a 20 Tiberium trade there. So you can see I've split my forces across both the pads. That is primarily because I want to make sure uh, that I'm charging the missile. I don't want the missile to stall when I'm playing an aggro deck. You want the missile to charge as quickly as physically possible. He's also playing a pretty aggro orientated deck as well. I can tell by the units that he's using. It doesn't really look like it's got an upper end. The Banshee and the Venom looks like it's very top end, um, potentially, uh, just based on what I was seeing in game, although we can see out of game that wasn't the case. So I've teched into the pit bulls to deal with the Venom spam. He built Venoms to deal with my Shockwaves, just like you would build Talons to deal with Shockwaves or with Flame Troopers. However, the pit bulls are a good answer to Banshees and to Venoms in general, and some clever point management managed to win me the first missile. Winning the first missile is such an important boon for this deck, because I can now start to apply pressure to his Harvester, force him to build counters to the pit bulls, because you can see he started spamming laser squads. I don't really want my population cap to be completely 
um, filled with pit bulls when he's got laser squads on the field because pit bulls do nothing versus laser squads. So if I want him to kill them for me while still generating a bit of pressure, I'm going to run them at the harvester. I don't need to get the harvester. The harvester would have been a nice addition to um, sort of the overall outcome of this particular uh, sequence of events. But what I'm primarily doing is forcing him to build counters to my pit bulls right next to his harvester, which is more missile squads uh, and more and more banshees. So whilst I then go into the Shockwave Troopers, which is the natural counter into his missile squads, he's then going to go back to the Venoms and back to the Banshees. What I'm aiming to do here is split his pressure across all three pads. Uh, I, I know that he's gone some sort of heavy air orientated uh, plan here. Missile squads do great versus air and Pitbulls do great versus Venoms and Banshees. So overall, I kind of trump him in terms of... Um, the outcomes here and you can see with my very fast miss uh, pit bulls i was managed to cl uh, claim that last missile at the very last moment but what it shows you is this deck is all about maintaining constant pressure all about maintaining constant pressure and this guy was no slouch either um this guy had units that were um yeah very similar this guy had units that were very similar levels levels to me um so he uh he really did uh he really did do work uh, in fact, they were much, I mean, the Banshees and the, the Riflemen were higher than me. Those were about level. But yeah, he looked like he topped out at the the Inferno. But he never really had the Tiberium to get the t Inferno out. And that is number one lesson from that deck. He never had the Tiberium to get the Inferno out because he was too close to losing the game. He had to spam Banshees and Venoms to contest all three pads. Uh, because unfortunately, one Inferno wasn't going to cut it. That is how this deck wins against tech decks. They will never. They shouldn't have the Tiberium to get a titan or a wolverine out because it should cost too much and you should already be winning the game and putting pressure on he had to respond with units that were lower caliber in his deck because otherwise i just charge the missile and win uh, and that's the big outcome uh, that i want you to take from that particular deck it's all about just getting that first missile and maintaining pressure and that deck can take you all the way from zero to tiberium really easily if you learn how to play it properly okay we're going to talk about the next deck which is the gdi tech deck Ta-da! Magic. Yes, the GDI tech deck. And this is a tech deck that you should get access to fairly quickly. I know it's random um, what tech units you get, but I do believe you get Wolverines, and I'm pretty certain it's easy to access Titans in the earlier levels. You should at some point get access to Titans, especially within the first 10 or so levels. So this is the GDI tech deck. Now, this is a, I would say this is going to be a bit harder if you choose to climb with this one. It might be easier at the lower levels because people don't punish tech as heavily. But as you get towards Masters and Tiberium, this is the deck that you'll probably be less consistent with versus the aggro deck. But I know some of you, including myself, like to use the big, cool units. Um, so let's have a look at this deck in action. This is a bit of a tougher game for me because, again, like I said, this is a deck that re really requires you to have a double harvester build at some point. Now, going double harvester out the gates, I never recommend. I never recommend going double harvester out the gates. And you'll see the point at which in this game I choose to go double harvester. So I open with a defensive start. It's going for the missile squads. This is to stop a bike rush on my single harvester. It's to potentially deal with exactly what I'm seeing here. For some reason, bikes after having opened with the harvester. This is a little bit late for a bike rush, um, which is why I'm able to just essentially run my bike, my missiles towards his own harvester. And then he just backs off, which is fine. Now, you'll notice that I'm not really um, charging the missile freely at this point. Um, simply because, I, for the most part, you want to try and stall the missile out as much as possible when you're playing tech decks. You don't want to charge the missile, really. If he's going to force the missile charge, um, you want to do everything that you can to contest that point and stop it from charging up. Because, simply put, um, the more charge that goes into a missile, the worse it's going to be for you overall. Another good way to deal with Scarabs is if you have units that have already taken damage and you kind of just want to get rid of them, I sometimes throw the units that I want to just get rid of into a Scarab, which deals with them pretty nicely. Now, he's playing a kind of aggro variant deck here, which means that I do have to respond to the early pressure, which you can see means I'm using a lot of the mid portions of my deck more than anything. Now, for some reason, he sticks two buggies in the top pad, and that gives me enough time to get the first missile, which is basically my cue to go for the double harvester. If I win the first missile, I can easily go for double harvester because I've got so much time to work with now. Uh, and he actually goes and scouts out my double harvester with a buggy here, but it's not gonna be enough because I've actually got a good amount of defense in place. 
Um, he started to spam scarabs, not really sure why. Um, but really, what I'm thinking at this point is, right, I, ju I just wait this out now. I can go for tech, I can get my wolverines out. Wolverines are really good defensive tools versus scarabs. Uh, my titans aren't great versus bikes, as you'll notice as the game goes on, but I do also have the pit bulls and the predators if I'm starting to struggle with a bike spam. He hasn't been too clever with the use of his scarabs, to be honest. And to be honest, a Lieutenant Strongarm turret is only a, ten, a negative 10 Tiberium trade for me versus scarabs. Uh, and now I'm just waiting to get my tech into play. My first Wolverine comes out on this second missile, which is really huge for me. Uh, Wolverines are a great defensive tool versus scarabs. And pair it with the Titan, which is why this combo is so good. Wolverines are great versus air and... and um, infantry and titans are great versus vehicles you put them in a one two combo like you can see here and honestly they are pretty much unstoppable versus a lot of what you get thrown at um even versus orcas and things along those lines one of the things you will notice here which is is very tough for me to deal with is the fact that titans actually kind of suck dealing at attack bikes the reason titans suck at dealing with attack bikes is they can only really kill um a few of the squad at a time and they're quite slow to attack to be honest um, he actually ends up getting this second missile because of some scarab placement and the fact that I moved my titan off the, uh, the missile here as well. And you can see uh, how slow my titan is at killing the bike squad at the top. It's one bike at a time for every shot. And although they deal with them in terms of one-shotting them, uh, it just is such a slow process. And it's a really good way to contest pads versus titans by spamming, um, by spamming attack bikes at them. Which is why I was surprised he wasn't doing more of it, to be honest. However, I've now established myself into full tech mode. I have full population cap, two sets of Wolverines and Titans, uh, and honestly, I'm in a really great position. Um, I think it would be very difficult for him to come back from this point. He would have to try and sneak the missile away, and as you can see, uh, that's going to be pretty difficult to do now that I've got the Wolverine set up and also able to body block that last uh, back right panel with my Titan. Ended up getting me the win. Uh, so the really the major takeaways from that game, don't double harvest throughout the gate, very easy to punish as you go on. You've got to find the right time to double harvester. Don't worry about losing the first missile. Your, name, your aim in, with this particular deck is not to win the first missile. Obviously, if you can get it for free, contest it and take that first missile because it buys you time. But by the end of the second missile, you want to get your tech units online and going. If you lose the first missile, you might find it more difficult to achieve your win condition, which is why the GDI aggro deck is much easier to execute on. Another thing with this deck is also the fact that you do have a decent early game to work with. Uh, defensive starts and the mid game of your uh, pit bulls and predators actually can be enough to contest a lot of people um, in that middle portion of the game. So don't be afraid to use your war factory units. Don't be afraid to use your infantry uh, if that's going to be necessary to take the win. You just want to make sure that when the Tiberian ramps up towards that third missile, that's when those big hitting tech units are coming online. This is a deck that requires practice, it requires patience, um, and obviously stalling missiles is a really big deal here because the longer the game goes on, the longer the Tiberium takes to ramp, so the more um, likely it is for the Tiberium to ramp up. And what I mean by stalling missiles is you want the missile bar to be grey or yellow, which means getting a combination of pads where it's equal between the two of you. Either no one charging it, or you're both equally charging it, which means the missile does not move up the charge meter, which makes it very hard for aggro decks to accelerate their win. That's why aggro decks want to charge it ASAP and tech decks want to stall it as much as they physically can without giving away too much Tiberium. All right, we're going to talk about this Nod deck now. And uh, again, the magic of video production. This is the Nod deck that I want to talk about. And the reason I haven't included a Nod tech deck is because simply... Nod tech units kind of suck, um, and a lot of people will tell you that. In, in my eyes, you know that I love the Avatar. If you've watched any of my videos, I absolutely love the Avatar, in love with that. The Widowmaker has its places, and the Basilisk is a pretty good tech unit, but you don't unlock those for a very long time in Command & Conquer Rivals, so there's no point in me showing you decks. I could show you the Flame Tank, but honestly, it's a pretty one-dimensional unit. The Rockworm is, is absolutely ass. Cyborgs have their place, but I, I wouldn't recommend them because I think they're so easily countered by shockwaves and flame troopers. Uh, so honestly, this is the Nod deck that you want to be able to use from unlocking Nod. Seth, your first commander, militants, laser squads, flame troopers, attack bikes, uh, scorpion tank, and venom. Those are the units that you want, and those are the units that will do the job for you. 
So again, very similar win conditions to the GDI aggro deck. And that's the beauty of playing these two decks in, in, in synchrony. Both of them want to do the same thing. So if you're playing the Lieutenant Strongarm aggro deck and the Nod aggro deck as you're climbing, these are just beautifully synchronous in terms of the way that you want to play them. Um, so let's have a look at uh, this particular game. And, and again, um, going up against fairly even unit levels, which is great. I had, a, I had a bit of trouble with this game in particular. This guy, um, I remember playing it and thinking, bloody hell, this guy's actually not too bad. So again, I just want to sort of scout out pretty early on. I want to use my militants to have a look at uh, what's going on in the field. And I'm going to leave them on the pad whilst I get a view. Now, in my in my mind, I was thinking maybe he's going double harvester because he's got a defensive uh, laser squad start. But then he gets out a, a random set of militants. And I guess that's to protect, to protect his laser squad randomly. Um, but now uh, I'm going to go in and try and take an offensive move. This was actually a bit of a mistake from me. I moved off the pad, but also with that flame trooper squad coming in, um, he actually ends up cleaning up uh, my flaming squad pretty easily. And often you'll find that flamer versus flamer battle just comes down to who has got the more flamers on the pitch right now. And he ended up having a lot of good flamer position. Um, so that is now going to be a battle of me just sending flamers at him and him just sending flamers at me until one of us gets the advantageous flamer position, which at the moment is him. So I made a bit of a mistake in this game, early game. I probably should have taken that defensive position. There wasn't really any need for me to push aggressively versus him. Uh, and so I actually go straight into the Venoms. He responds so well with a set of attack bikes. Um, and honestly, I end up losing this first missile because I just didn't play it very well. But I want to show you that it's not the end of the world if you lose the first missile as an aggro deck. I thought I was facing up another, against another aggro deck, so I didn't lose hope. Um, so I just end up going straight into laser squads to deal with those attack bikes. The equal level laser squad should deal with them pretty quickly. Uh, and now it's all about a little bit of micro battle between me getting my laser squads into the right position and me getting a flamer squad into the right position as well. Now he actually uses the Oxana boost here. And because I think he only had two flamer units left in that particular squad, he ends up doing less DPS and taking more damage across the board. And he's, my attacking flame has actually come into an advantageous position here. This is the part of the, the, the match which I might have to pause to you because if you haven't seen this unit, you might not see it as you climb sometimes, but it's called the Giga Cannon. The Giga Cannon has a two-tile radius. It ramps up in damage over time, and at its full damage, it splits among units that are grouped up as well. The way to deal with a Giga, uh, Giga Cannon, the way to deal with a Giga Cannon is to break its attack beam as much as you can. Just cut in and out of that attack beam, and it'll have to reset its ramp. Um, I think anyway. I'm not totally sure. Don't trust me on it resetting its ramp, but breaking its attack beam is always good. Um, so this is what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get into a position where I'm able to break its attack beam. Um, unfortunately, there's no way I, uh, I can really do too much here. But as you can see, I get those flamers out. It moves forward. And actually, when it moves forward into this aggressive position, this is the time for me to strike with my, uh, my scorpion tank here. Uh, I end up actually accidentally attacking the wrong target on the first hit, but luckily I use Seth's deploy on the back uh, portion of this uh, Giga Cannon to give myself the best position to get onto this pad and win the missile. Whilst he was busy trying to deal with that aggressive Scorpion, he didn't actually get anything onto the pad, uh, and that ended up giving me a really strong position. So Giga Cannon comes out again, and again you're going to see me uh, play the game of just trying to micro my units back in and out of the Giga Cannon's radius. And again you'll see me do it here. I just get it out of position, force the Giga Cannon to move up, and here we go, I'm going to move my tank into an aggressive position. And even if I get one hit on the tank, that's actually pretty good. One hit on the Giga Cannon takes up a good portion of its HP. Now he did add Oxana boost it here, which unfortunately meant that uh, it was ramping up pretty quickly. Uh, but with me deploying my... Um, flame squad at the back end of this as well and the fact that giga cannons can't actually deal with the venom i actually get the venom to kill off this giga cannon uh, and even though the stealth tank is there stealth tanks suck versus scorpions and again it's just about controlling this point um i actually did a really good job of just putting pressure onto a giga cannon trying to control the point as much as i could and just monitoring um the pressure needed to exert on this on this player and you can see just at the very end here, my Scorpion tank's in the right position, as well as pushing onto that back platform wins me the third missile, which gets me the overall victory. That was a, a rough game, and I, although I lost the first missile, it shows you that it's not impossible to come back. Good placement of units and understanding that the units that you're up against and what their weaknesses are is the best way to victory. That Giga Cannon deck should have destroyed me. I didn't have Banshees. I didn't have anything like that in my deck to deal with it. However, 
proper micromanagement of my units in and out of the laser beam to make it difficult for him to focus the right target and then forcing him to move aggressively onto the point allowing my scorpions to move up and the mistake that he made is he didn't body block that giga cannon the way to make the mlrs and the giga cannon work is to body block them and he didn't do that and i exploited that by just moving my scorpions aggressively even if they went down a single hit of a scorpion to set up for a kill on the giga cannon is a good um trade in my opinion as long as you're not losing a missile because of, because of it so we just had some really good micromanagement around that middle missile point to win that game but again but again the primary win conditions of this deck get that first missile if you can make sure you're controlling and pressuring the opponent after that first missile win but it's not impossible to come back like you saw in this game if you do lose the first missile very micro intensive these aggro decks um, and that's something that's going to be the most punishing factor to learning these decks you have got to be on point with your micro you really do um, but it's all about managing the missile pads correctly contesting at the right time understanding your counters micromanaging your units properly but if you master it it can take you all the way to, to Tiberium League on a free-to-play deck. Although my unit levels are higher, obviously, because I'm in Tiberium League, this is the set of decks that carried me when I started all the way up to Tiberium League. So the decks themselves, the units in them, they will do the job for you. You don't need these fancy units. This deck can beat anything that gets thrown at you, honestly. It really can. And so just practice it practice it practice it learn the ins and outs of it learn how to micromanage your units correctly and you should get tiberium right guys i hope to see you up there soon